Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about HbA1c or glycated hemoglobin. HbA1c is the glycated form of hemoglobin. Normal human hemoglobin is of several types which contains four subunits which are made of various combinations of different polypeptide chains. In this 90 to 95% of hemoglobin of normal adult is HbA1 or HbA and this consists of two alpha chains and two beta chains and HbA1c it is the glycated form of hemoglobin and this term glycated hemoglobin it describes a chemically stable conjugate a stable conjugate of hemoglobin with glucose it is a stable conjugate of hemoglobin with glucose. And this glycation, it is non-enzymatic addition of sugar. Non-enzymatic addition of sugar. Whereas, glycosylation, another term is glycosylation. This glycosylation, it is enzymatic addition of sugar. Enzymatic addition. And this glycosylation, it is a form of co-translational or post-translational modification. So, coming back to glycation, this glycation, it is the covalent attachment of free sugars to proteins. Here the protein is hemoglobin and it is a non-enzymatic process. And this HbA1 and HbA1c, amino acid sequence of this HbA1 and HbA1c These are same Amino acid sequence are same In HbA1 The beta subunit Alpha 2, beta 2 This beta subunit has Valine in the N terminal end In the N terminal end There is valine There is a valine When glucose is attached To the N terminal valine of the beta chain Of this HbA1 HbA1c is formed here one glucose is attached. When the glucose is attached to the valine of the N terminal end of this uh, HbA1, that is, that is known as HbA1c. So, in the formation of HbA1c, first there will be alpha, beta, here also alpha, beta subunits and here N terminal end. And here one glucose molecule is attached. And this glucose molecule it is attached and it forms glucose it is attached and there is a rearrangement and there will be a formation of shift base that is an unstable intermediate that is known as aldimine and here the end terminal end here it is CH CHOH And this is known as shift base. Shift base that is aldimine. It is an unstable intermediate. Then there will be amidori rearrangement. Amidori rearrangement. And it forms HbA1c. CH2, C double bond O, COH, H. CHOH and it is stable. It is HbA1c. So there will be addition of this glucose molecule to the valine in the N terminal end of this HbA1 and it forms 
this HbA1c. So the glucose remains attached to the hemoglobin for the lifespan of RBC, which is about 120 days. This glucose remains attached to the hemoglobin for the lifespan of RBC, which is about 120 days. So this test shows the average level of glucose in the blood for the past 3 months. Average level of glucose in the blood for the past 3 months. So it gives this HbA1c, it gives an overview of patient's sugar control for at least uh, for last 2 to 3 months. And it can be used as a diagnostic test for diabetes mellitus and an assessment test for glycemic control of patients with diabetes. And for the test, there is no need of uh, preparation for the test. That means we can give the sample at any time. And the sample is taken in an EDTA tube. And the methods are HPLC, that is high performance liquid chromatography. Then enzymatic assays, as, enzymatic assays, as the, assays are there. Then immunoassays. Then capillary electrophoresis. These are the methods. Then the blood levels of glycated hemoglobin. It depends on the lifespan of red cells. Lifespan of red cells and on the concentration of blood glucose. Blood glucose concentration. So the levels of blood levels of glycated hemoglobin. It depends on the lifespan of red cells and the blood glucose concentration. Then uh, this HbA1c values. It is a it is these values are given as percentage, or can be expressed expressed as estimated average glucose. Estimated average glucose. Or EAG can be expressed as percentage or estimated average glucose or EAG. This EAG it uses the unit mg per dl. It is the same as that of blood glucose test. So coming to the levels HbA1c in percentage and blood glucose level in mg per dl. If it is 4 percentage, it means 68 mg per dl. If it is 4 per, 5 percentage, it means 97 mg per dl. If it is 6 percentage, it means 126 mg per dl. If it is 7, it is 154. 8, it means it is 183. 9 means it is 212. 10 it is 240, 11, it is 269, 12, 298, then 30 means it is 327, 14, it is 354. So the, these are the values. HbA1c, if the, if the HbA1c in percentage is 4, then it, its blood glucose concentration will be 68 mg per dl. So from this, if the level is less than 6 percentage, if the level is less than 6 percentage, it will be normal. Less than 6 percentage, it is normal. Then between 6 to 6.5 percentage, it is pre-diabetes. That means there, is, there will be a risk of developing diabetes. And 6.5 or above, it means diabetes. If the level is less than 6 percentage, it can be normal. It is considered as normal. If it is between 6 to 6.5 percentage, means it is pre-diabetes. Then 6.5 or higher, it means there will be diabetes. Then several factors can falsely increase or decrease HbA1c result. For example, this increase in HbA1c, falsely increase in HbA1c seen in patients with kidney failure, then 
excess intake of alcohol then in fatty liver there will be forcefully increased hba1c level then forcefully decreased hba1c levels are seen in sickle cell anemia and chronic blood loss chronic blood loss so this is about hba1c or glycated hemoglobin this is today's topic thank you for watching